You are listening to 88.3 FM WXOU here at Motor City Comic Con with Mark McClure from the Christopher Reeve era of Superman. Hi, Mark. Hello. How are you liking Detroit so far? Uh, the room was a little loud with the air conditioner units, but uh, other than that, Detroit's pretty cool, and I love the documentaries about the basketball teams, the bad boys. Detroit's got a lot of history. I mean, it's like Superman kind of history. Yeah. Man, never a dull story here. Oh, yeah. That is a true statement. Oh, yeah. Good girl. Yes. Born and raised. Tough, right? If you grow up in Detroit, you're tough. Yeah. That's, what I, that's kind of my take on it. Right? Yeah, when you tell people you're from Detroit, they're like, oh. Yeah, back up. Back up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to kick my ass. Uh-huh. <laughs> cool. So you are, you have known Aaron, who's sitting over here, for quite some time. He's standing over there. Or standing over there for quite some time. And I was wondering, since you've known him for since he was a baby, what oh, has... This is a baby. Yes. What has it been like seeing him grow up, basically? Well, there we are. You know, that's the baby we're talking about, which is a trip. And uh, what was the question? So what, what has it been like watching him grow up and, you know, doing all this stuff with you? Uh, it's pretty good. I mean, I don't see Aaron that much, but just the fact that we're grown up and we survived the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, now 2020s, we're survivors! Yeah. No, it's pretty good. It's, it's, it's always nice to stand here with, you know, the cast, the surviving cast, which is incredible because there's really not many of us left, which is crazy, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, Chris wasn't that old. Margie wasn't that old. Dick Donner, he made it into his mid-80s, I think. We just lost him, and he's the king of this whole project. If, if Dick Donner wasn't the man in charge... We wouldn't be standing here. He yes. was so great. Tom Mankiewicz. I mean, there's so many great names that we've lost that have made it possible for us to be standing here, which yeah. is it's kind of weird, you know, thinking about that. But I remember them. A lot of people don't. But, you know, God bless them for doing what they did. Yeah. So what steps did you have to take to bring a comic book character to life? Nothing. Just be myself. I just bring my energy. You're talking about Jimmy Olsen? I just, just being myself. You know, Jimmy was energy. Jimmy was eyes wide open. Jimmy was uh, react first and then think about it later. Yeah. You know, and I kind of had it. I got the job very easily just by being me, I guess. And uh, so the reason that they hired me for being me, I just kept being me and it was yeah. good. it was good for Jimmy. It was cool. So, in addition to working on Superman, you also worked on Back to the Future. Yes. And yes. And what does it feel like to have not one but two classic films under your belt? It's amazing. <clears throat> you know, when I look at my resume every so often, I go, "Wow, these are you know." And you know, I would say Apollo thirteen. Apollo thirteen is one of the films that I'm really proud of because I kind of channeled my father. For that one and that one just kind of sticks out to me like my work is is important to me you know Jimmy is great for what it's done Dave McFly is great for what he did but Glenn Lunny was good but you know Dave or Dave McFly you know he's a great guy he's another guy that's just an honest guy you know, yeah. but in, 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 in the moment of making that film, nobody really knew. Yeah. But when we saw the screening with the cast and the crew, when the lights came up, it was like, like, you know, usually you'll have applause after your film. Yeah. And it's just like, where's the, you know, the after party. But when we saw Back to the Future, it was like, what did we just see? Yeah. Because you can't get that from the paper. Right. You had to see the film. And when everybody saw it, it was like, wow, yeah. this thing is going to be special. Yeah. When, like, peop- when you're at, like, or any cast meets and you have stories, like, when you go to, like, Universal Studios and you see, like, the people, like, like the cast members as, like, the characters from Back to the Future, like, yes. what is the, how, how does that make you feel? Is it weird talking to... I just think it's, it's amazing how film has that power. 
and especially, I mean, for Back to the Future, I think it was 85. And here we are, so I mean, what's it? So it's almost coming 30 years, 40 years for Back to the Future. And Superman is celebrating, are we almost 50 years? 78? 78. When is when released? 44? 44 years, is that our number? I mean, that's that's a lot of numbers. Yeah. That's a lot of numbers. That's older than us. That's older than us. You. Both Logan and I combined. That's crazy. You know, I mean, that really is. And, and we're standing here with all these other survivors. Let's call it survivors. Yeah. Because life is life. And to be standing here and then be involved in a project that, in film, in celluloid, that has these kind of legs, you know, for me is amazing that I got to be a part of it. I don't know what other films can compare. I'm sure we could sit down and find a lot that have the legs. But Superman is in kind of its own special little place. Mm-hmm. And Christopher Reeve, to me, is the man. And I don't think in my lifetime anybody's going to be Superman yeah, for me. I've you, tried. You took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say, he is Superman. He's, he's the guy. And I've gone to films hoping that the mantle will be passed. And the only thing I saw was Wonder Woman. Wonder oh, I Woman. Love that movie. Wonder Woman. When I watched it, I thought, "There it is. There's the tone. There's the characters. There's the feel. Yep. Like this could go." Oh yeah, that was a great movie. That was the only film that I saw that could, you could pass the, what do the they baton. call it? The baton. Yeah. Uh, pass the. What did Chris have? Pass the cape. Yeah, I was just gonna say maybe the cape. Let's pass the cape. But that was really the film that I saw that said, "Wow." There it is. Mm-hmm. There, they captured oh, yeah. the vibration. Plus, Gal Gadot was amazing. She was great. She Tough. Was so good. But it was just the story, had the tone. And, you know, the stuff I watch these days, well, I don't watch a lot of them, but it's just that little tone, that fine line of believability. Yeah. Believability and fantasy. Yeah. That's the trick. Because I always said, like, if you don't believe, you know, and the crowd that shows up here, the fans, mm-hmm. you can't fool them. Right. Really. Make it honest. Make it believable. Yeah. And you got yourself a hit. Yeah. That's it. Don't yeah. don't cut corners. Don't try to be funny. Mm-hmm. Just be funny. Yeah, for sure. Well, once again, I'm here with Mark McClure from the Christopher Reeve era of Superman.